It's dishonest for YouTubers to talk only about the good stuff of these different camera bodies when all of them have their pros and cons. A $2,000 camera and a $6,000 camera, you can't tell the difference depending on the environment. I love Sony cameras. As you can see here, I have several on the table. I use several at my place of work. I love the Sony ecosystem. You're gonna see a lot of camera reviews on this channel. Today, we're reviewing the FX30. If you are on the hunt for a camera in the $2,000-ish price range, you probably don't need to look any further than the FX30. This is essentially the FX3 with a couple of key drawbacks that we're gonna talk about in today's video. If you wanna stick around for the end, I'm gonna talk about who I think this camera is for and the types of creators that should utilize the FX30 for their production needs. I use all sorts of Sony cameras, so truly I feel like I know what I'm talking about when it comes to the Sony ecosystem, but I'll let you be the judge of that as you watch this video. The only shots that were not shot on the FX30 were of the FX30 body itself, which I shot on the Sony A1 so you can get an idea for what a $6,500 camera looks like compared to this around $2,000 camera. Okay, we first need to talk about the image quality of the FX30. Image quality is the most important factor to consider when purchasing your camera. So don't let anyone tell you different. Image quality is what matters. I'll start off by saying this. In quality, well-lit environments, like studio setups like this right now, or shooting outdoors in well-lit scenes, I literally cannot tell the difference between the FX6, the FX3, the A1, the A7S III, the A7IV, and the FX30. And there is a wide range of price points there, all the way down to like 2,000, sub $2,000, the FX30 is $1,800, all the way up to 6,000, $6,500 in the A1 and the FX6. So that should tell you something. A $2,000 camera and a $6,000 camera, you can't tell the difference depending on the environment. But it does not come without a couple of key drawbacks that I wanna mention. First has to do with the dual base ISO setting of 800 and 2500. If you don't know what that means, it essentially means that there are two key ISO settings, 800 and 2500, in which in S-Log3, the camera shoots at its, uh, its best quality. Basically, its cleanest image is produced at those two points, okay? The problem with that is that at 2000, it's pretty noisy, and then above 2500, even though it cleans up at 2500, above 2500, at 3200 or 4000, it gets pretty noisy again. So I really don't like shooting in S-Log3 above 2500 ISO. As soon as I get to that 2500 ISO range in the FX30, I switch to s cinetone right away because I know I'm gonna get better results in post-production just by shooting an s cinetone and avoiding to have to try to shoot two stops overexposed and lower my noise floor. It just gets too grainy. Now, if you were to shoot on the A7S III or the FX3 or the FX6, you could go up to 12,800 and have a super clean image. I would not touch 12,800 on this camera. So if you're somebody who shoots in low light environments often, you might wanna save yourself up a little more cash to purchase a camera that performs better in low light situations. As a standard rule of thumb, if you're shooting above 4,000 ISO on the FX30, I would switch it to s cinetone or picture profile off to get the best results. The other con that I wanna mention is the crop sensor, the APS-C crop sensor, okay? It kinda has to do with image quality, but the bigger issue that I have with the crop is gonna be centered around what it does to focal lengths with the 1.5 times crop factor. My two favorite lenses to shoot on in the Sony ecosystem right now are the 35 millimeter F1.4 G Master and the 24 to 70 G Master lens, okay? Putting those two lenses on the FX30 it just doesn't give me what I want as far as focal length is concerned. I don't love the crop factor there. The 1.5 times squeeze makes that 35 closer to a 50 millimeter and the 24 to 70, this weird like 35 to 100 millimeter. It's just not the ideal situation that I want there. The two lenses that I often put on the FX30 are the 16 to 35 G Master and the 20 millimeter or the 24 millimeter from Sony. That 20 is a 1.8 and the 24 is a 1.4. Don't get me wrong. All of those lenses are great. This camera produces a great image with all of them. But for the situations that I shoot in, I like to have a little bit of a wider frame like you see here. So I have to be on the 16 to 35 shooting at like 18 to 20 millimeters to get this shot right here. On some of these other cameras, if I was shooting on the 16 to 35, you'd see my entire studio space here. Uh, but with the FX30, I have to push the camera all the way back into this corner over here um, just to get this image. So it's not ideal for my current lens lineup, 
and I have to be limited in my lens selection. Okay, I wanted to get those two kind of drawbacks out of the way first because a lot of people just gas this camera up when truly there are some trade-offs. There are trade-offs when you lower your price points and you raise your price points of what you're purchasing. There's pros and cons for all of that. So it's dishonest for YouTubers to talk only about the good stuff of these different camera bodies when all of them have their pros and cons. Those are a couple of from from a user who actually uses the camera for real production work, not just like testing and camera reviews and then moving on to the next thing. I use all of these for real production stuff. I can tell you that there are a couple of key drawbacks and those are them. However, there are a ton of positives for this camera. There are a ton of reasons you should purchase this camera. Let's talk about those now. Before we go any further, if you feel like you're getting value out of this video, make sure you smash that like button and subscribe if you haven't already. Over 75 to 80% of you are not subscribed to this channel. So please, if you wanna support what we're doing here, feel free to leave a like and a comment on this video and subscribe so you don't miss anything else. Now let's shift to some of the positives. First being the internal fan. I was shooting some B-roll the other day in 4K 60 and what I noticed was my hand was actually getting kind of warm from the, the warm air of the fan blowing straight onto my hand. It wasn't uncomfortable in any way, but I realized like, oh, weird. Like I can feel the, the heat dissipating from this camera, from the fan blowing it out. This is actually a positive because if it did not have this fan built in, it would be a lot like the Sony ZV-E1, which does not have that functionality, which struggles with overheating. So with the FX30, you're not gonna get that overheating because you have the internal fan built in, so you can run for a super long record time and not have any problems. I'm shooting in 4K right now, and I have zero concerns that this camera is gonna overheat in my like 72 degree, 73 degree studio on this summer day. Okay, another thing I love is this audio handle that it comes with. Obviously it is a little bit of an upgrade. You can buy the FX30 standalone body only for closer to like $1,800, which is a steal, frankly. Uh, but I would encourage you, if you're gonna fork over that money, just buy the top handle as well because you cannot find a better unit than uh, this top handle for that price point. It's a great two XLR inputs. You got manual control over both XLRs um, and you have a 3.5 millimeter jack on the handle as well. So you don't have to run the 3.5 into your camera and you have a top handle. This top handle helps a ton with ergonomics and being able to film um, like low angle shots with that top handle. And um, if you want, you can purchase this uh, small rig or this Condor Blue handle extension, which makes it a lot more comfortable to shoot with. Let's your pinky get on that handle as well versus only having three fingers because it's kind of a short handle. Um, but I love this audio unit. You should purchase it for your FX30. Okay, we're gonna go rapid fire here with some of my other favorite things about this camera. First, great autofocus. Amazing Sony autofocus. You can just tap the screen and it'll lock onto the eye and you're tracking. Right now it's tracking with me wherever I wanna go. Great autofocus, love that feature. Second, quarter inch threads all over the body. You can hook up monitor mounts and screw on audio recorders or whatever you want to these quarter inch threads, hugely important. Next is the large record button that lights up bright red when you hit record. Love this feature, as well as the tally light to let you know that you are recording. Of course, the flip out screen is incredible. I can't speak highly enough about uh, that every camera I wanna purchase from now on needs to have an articulating flip out screen. I love the beefy, uh, the body of the FX3 and the FX30, both of them with the same body. That handle is super nice to hold, great ergonomics. You have a ton of quality resolution options to choose from on the FX30, 4K, 1080, you name it. You have great options here for the FX30, as well as with the latest firmware, you have the ability to shoot in like correct shutter speeds. So you can go 1 48th of a second, which is what I'm doing right now in 24 FPS. Um, you can shoot at the correct shutter speed. Normally, some of these other cameras, you can only shoot at um, 1 50th shutter speed, but in the FX, 30 right now I'm shooting at 148th, which is super nice. And finally, the new menu system that Sony has updated from starting with the A7S 3 that new menu, it still has that new menu. Um, it actually has the updated menu interface where it kind of gives you more space in your frame uh, in the home screen by putting some of those, those settings at the top and the bottom rather than all over the middle and the sides of the screen. Okay, that concludes the rapid fire round. Now, who is this camera for? It's a great question. I think this camera is for, first, if this is your, gonna be your main camera body, your A cam, the one camera that you take to all your shoots. I think this is for people who are a bit earlier in their production career, say one to two years, just getting into 
freelance gigs and maybe is it like a, it's a part-time or a side hustle that you're doing, this is a great camera. It's great for YouTube. It's great for podcasting, video podcasts. It's great for a lot of things. This can be a great A camera for people a little bit earlier in their career. Now, if you're further along in your career and you already have some glass and some camera bodies, I recommend this as like a B or a C camera or even a B roll camera, which is how I've been using it at my place at work. All of this B roll shot in this video was on the FX3. I love it for that. I think it's a great fit for a, a B roll or a, a B C camera. Overall, great audio features, great image quality, not great at low light, but really good overall value. I'd recommend this camera to a lot of people if it's going to be your first camera that you've ever purchased and you're really wanting to focus on video, the FX30 might be your best choice in 2023 and maybe even 2024, but we'll see what Sony does here in the near future. Thank you so much guys for taking time to watch this video. If you enjoyed it, I have a lot more videos you can check out right here. Thanks so much, much love.